that if we take the inverse tangent and the y and x are both positive, you know the calculator is already going to give you an angle in the first y. Right? You should know that. Can anybody remind me what is the range of the inverse tangent function? Like, what's the biggest the angle can be? Biggest angle. Pi over 2. Technically, not including pi over 2 because that's undefined, okay, but certainly um, no bigger than that. And what's the smallest? Negative pi over 2. Okay? So if your calculator is set to radians, and whenever you type in inverse tangent, the calculator is always going to give you an answer, an angle, between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. But, obviously, you could have an angle up here. Okay, so the best way to avoid that problem is just to draw a picture, and then if you write tangent of beta equals y over x, you already know how to solve that for all quadrants. Okay, so, let's go ahead and do this. So r is easy, right? r squared is just x squared plus y squared, so just like you did with polar form of complex numbers, you just take the square root of the square plus the square, right? So 2 squared plus 1 squared is how much? 5. 5, and then you take the square root. Pretty easy, right? And for the angle, we're just going to take the inverse tangent of y over x. Okay, so what's that y? 1 over 2. And we can just do that on the calculator. Here, let me show you that real quick. Okay, so first of all, don't forget to hit mode. Do I want radians or degrees? Radians. Okay, good. Notice the question is not telling you radians, but it's also not telling you degrees. So remember our default rules, unless you're told otherwise, we're going to use radians. Okay, so my calculator is in radians, good. So, let's go ahead and do this. Second inverse tangent of one half. So we type in one divided by two. And there we go. So let's just round this off to two decimal places. So this is approximately 0 0.46. So that's not so bad, right? Now, again, this one was kind of easy because it was in the first quadrant. Let's make a small change, and let's say the point is negative 2, comma 1. Now, I already told you that if you use the inverse tangent on your calculator, the calculator, of course, knows the correct range to use, and the calculator will give you an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Correct? However, negative 2 comma 1 is right there. So is it in the correct range? No. So, oh my god, what are you going to do? Well, no problem. First, you're going to go ahead and just use the calculator to see what you get. And then you're going to look at the picture and you're just going to think about it for a little bit. Okay? But for right now, so if we have the point negative 2 comma 1, and we want to write this in polar form, then obviously we need an r to theta. Now r, that's easy. Before we had 2 comma 1, now we have negative 2 comma 1. So does everybody see why r is the same? Because you're going to square both the x and the y. Okay, so that's the same. Now, if I want to calculate the angle, well, you could start 
by finding the inverse tangent of, now notice it's not just one half, this time we have a negative two. Now I could put the negative on the top, bottom, or the middle, it doesn't matter, I'm trying to take the inverse tangent of a negative number, right? So let's go ahead and do that on the calculator. Okay, so we have second inverse tangent of negative one half. And notice we basically just get the negative of the same answer that we got before. Okay? But is that correct? Now, by looking at the picture, notice this is, of course, a negative angle. And you know it's going to be in this range, so obviously you know it's going to be this angle right here, right? But you can see from the picture that the angle that you really want is over here. So the question is, how do I get from here to here? What do I do? Plus pi. Plus pi. So what we really need is the inverse tangent of negative one half plus pi, which of course is this number, plus pi. And now I can do that on the calculator. So I can just type in plus pi. And there's my real answer. Okay, so theta is approximately equal to 2.68. So, does this mean that if you don't have the angle you want, you always have pi? 